support clockwork yeah. with a Weaver's Shadow Demon. Ember Spirit is... No, 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 we can't have Ember Spirit 1v1 Ooh. against the tank. Maybe Weaver is going to be this. Ten seconds remaining. Ember Spirit is in a trial lane? Who was... So we saw someone do an offlane Ember. I want to say maybe it was Star Ladder or something. Or was it... It wasn't yesterday we saw offlane Ember, was it? There was one game where I saw a team, they suddenly last pick an Ember when they had their ca what, their carry in mid already picked. I want to say it may have even been Liquid themselves who like ran an offlane Ember Spirit. And it was just this very bizarre thing. But the hero, I mean, it's like if you can get your levels in that offlane, you can still be... You don't need to have a huge amount of farm as an Ember. Just get some levels, farm off a Veil, which is pretty cheap, cost-effective item. Get a Blink later on. Your, uh, this is like a, a kind of similar draft to last game for NA where it's very mid-game aggressive centric. Wow. Yeah, this is um, perhaps a change of tune from Liquid, not gearing up for the late game quite as much, more trying to hit his timing around probably like a sanking blink with a couple of dragon lances on Drow and Shadow Fiend, start pushing down some early towers whenever they've got rock up. And I think the key thing for Nip is to fight around that rock cooldown. Like, they may lose a fight uh, to a Chaotic Offering, but as soon as that happens, they need to bounce back and immediately uh, put the put the pedal down and try and take the game to Team Liquid. Five seconds remaining. be doing that offlane Ember Spirit, or if they're going to try and match an aggro trilane against an injury lineup, uh, Rubik and Warlock as supports that feels uh, a bit dangerous. Arrow's already heading out to the top lane, and Cinderin's going to be escorting Trixie, so maybe we could be seeing some sort of uh, dual lane. Yeah, Cinderin on the clockwork, interestingly, but see... How he what he manages to get done it kind of change of tune from Nip putting Hani on that more five position role and Cinderin onto the four, but perhaps just a player preference thing with Cinderin being more uh, attuned to playing the the clockwork. Probably, I mean, uh, the, the more niche pick of the two as far as supports go. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're gonna have early setups here, so yeah, looks like dual lanes. With the Shadow Demon Ember Spirit against SK. That doesn't uh, feel too bad. You need the Shadow Demon in lane to make sure that uh, Control doesn't walk over that lane case with Alley. wonder how Clockwork's going to be able to perform as a support helping out Trixie in the bottom lane, though, against this aggro tri lane. It feels like a lane that he's not going to be able to find those kind of separations. So, unless he's purely here just to cog block and that's his only real objective. I'm not sure what he's going to be able to accomplish. Yeah, this trialing seems like the response to a potential clockwork presence down here, and this is a, a lane which should be pretty decently liquid favored. You're looking at three ranged heroes against a clockwork and a weaver who doesn't have max range himself. And I like this from Lick because Sanking doesn't need much help against a dual lane. If it's just the Shadow Demon Ember Spirit, he does very well in a 1v2 scenario. He should be able to get some decent farm up here. Shadow Demon doesn't really pressure him all that much. Now the Shadow Poison that it isn't a build, it's been nerfed so much. Uh, Sanking does even better in this 1v2 matchup, so it does feel like all these lanes are, are pretty good. And yeah, Cinderin, he does the cogs, he TP's top. I think he realizes like he needs to be up here to help zone mind control. He just tries to give a, a bit of boost to Trixie's lane, and they can now go for an attempted kill onto Mind Control, who is yet to level anything up, so he should still be okay. Cogs push back here into the chains. Maybe he's not okay. Goes for the early Sandstorm, and they don't actually have any counter vision. Mind Control nice. spotted that one out real quickly and sees his opportunity to win the lane just like that. <laughs> it looked like like Cinder and I mean he did make a great play. Got the boots, cut him off with the Cogs pushback, so he couldn't even burrow strike out at that point, but. Mind control with the presence of mind to, to save that skill point. Needs to be careful now because it is on cooldown and they've actually got him. Yep, they've got another Cogs pushback. Mind oh, control, he, actually, no, he just runs straight up push. and <laughs> is going to look for the TP out. But with the flame guard there, it looks like the damage may still be there unless he can actually juke this one out. Can, Sandstorm 
in. He's going to run north or south because he's got to run one way or the other. He can't just stick around. He's going to run north, try and go deeper into this jungle area. Has the TP skull ready to go, but now Cinderin's locked onto him. Has the cogs ready to go with the push if necessary. Mind control goes even farther north behind the tower now. Uh, looks to make his way all the way around the tower, and it might just be good unless... Okay, now he's going to put himself... Yeah, okay, he thought there was some way to make that one through, but... Not able to do so, and he will get uh, Corral into a corner, and first blood goes the way of Hani. Okay. <laughs> now, supports get what they were hoping for, at least in the end there, but very, very odd start to this offlane. You can TP right back in and get a decent amount of XP. There's the double range creep on the enemy side, so dearly for mind control, he gets uh, this wave towards his tower, as long as he can stop Hani from getting the side pull off, and it's like he should be able to at least, yeah, keep most of it near himself. Inrin's still going for another wraparound. I'm also trying to keep my eye on mid, where uh, currently Koifa is suffering in CS and actually was brought pretty low earlier from Miracle. This one seems to be going uh, a lot better for Miracle than it did last time again. But to be expected. Yeah. No, it feels like the lane stage is going really good for liquid i mean the offlane sanking dying is not really the end of the world he's now got a full level three worth of experience at his tower uh the mid lane's being handily won with the help of the drow aura and bottom lane weaver getting some cs here and there not really a, an easy kill for the liquid tri lane but they've still got the drow free farming so as far as timings go liquid are going to kind of hit theirs pretty nicely assuming nip don't make any big aggressive plays well, my control this time around, Flame Guard's going to be a lot harder to deal with. Does have to burrow strike over the trees. Last time he had Sandstorm, and that killed the Flame Guard relatively quickly. But level two is now up, and a big increase HP for that one. Waiting on Cinderin to have his go here on Miracle. See if he can actually get the successful gank leading into a Cogs and uh, a Sun Strike combo, but it doesn't look like he feels comfortable. Miracle holding the right hand side of the lane. Is going to start pushing forward as he did have vision of uh, Cinderin and his earlier. As Cinderin tries to get back to top lane, but is a bit too late. Mind control. That's what's coming. Trixie is actually going to be playing up against GH here. Followed that Rubik all the way into the mid lane, but a really good telekinesis throws him over to the other side of the river, which GH probably would have died otherwise. Oh, Miracle gets the Invis room before Trixie can deny it, so. He's in a good position. He may even turn and kill Trixie. Okay, Trixie. One last Shikuchi. Just enough mana. Miracle will be more than okay here. With the Invis rune, he can easily escape any kind of a gank coming in. He's actually keeping quite for low. I don't think Syndrome can really do all too much here. Yeah, Again, every Miracle's single just... time this rotation spotted out. He may double seen. raise him. Quite for. One, and another okay. one coming in, Invis, but oh, oh no, no, the raise misses. He doesn't have enough mana for the mid-range raise, so he actually completely misses out on that kill. Now got to be locked inside the cogs, but Miracle will gladly fight that one out. Telekinesis over the side, and a long-range yeah. raise comes in in time. This time, Miracle finds the kill. Was, uh, Mind control, he's done so. He, uh, every single time, cinderin has been spotted out by this ward, which has been so value for them a lot more aggressively into that duo lane, but looks like his yeah. aggression uh, bites back at him. I to haunt. Yeah, perhaps didn't see this, the sentry was brought out by Hani or something, but even so, it still feels like he's getting a decent amount of farm and XP out of this lane, already close to level 5, and, well, it's not really the end of his game that he's died a couple of times, although has set Era up to be in a very good position as far as his farm goes on Ember. Just come in and found Hani once again, gonna put some, some pressure onto him. They've got GH here with the cost of finale pop going down. They are going to be able to pick up this kill, and without a support, Era can't really fight Mind Control either. So nice rotation from GH, well set up by Mind Control. Yeah, the handy kill to get, and it's top lane getting some assistance now. I mean, Sand King will have uh, an even better time. Ooh, Everybody that's be a careful, smoke. Though. That's a Ooh. smoke that's immediately spotted by uh, GH's ward behind the tower may still just have his smoke pop purely by running into gh looks like so miracle knows that his life in is in danger might be a little bit more new for the next 30s and there we go gh will pop it as hani tries to swoop in towards the mid lane Miracle wasn't any way to be seen anyway so cinder you play? sneaky bugger look at you 
Gets around Matu, manages to catch him with the Cogs. It's going to be pushed out of said Cogs. Uh, Cogs do get a little bit more damage onto Matu, and it looks like they've got him dead. Managed to pick up with the Battery Assault where he left off. So, nice uh, rotation from Sindarin. Despite all those mid-rotations going awry, thanks to the ward, he finally does find a 6 in bottom. Yeah, that's a uh, nice kill to get. Drow was just kind of free farming away. Hadn't really seen any pressure head her way. And one of the hero's big weaknesses is uh, her real lack of sustain and inability to get away from ganks like that. So finally find a way to kill at least one of the two liquid carries and see if they can follow it up with some additional aggression. At some point, they do need to prioritize getting Syndra in his level six. He's still just level three and a half. Bounty runes will help out a little bit, but he may even need like a, a lane to himself just to get that level six at some point soon. Yeah, maybe we'll see uh, Trixie pick up the call and be the uh, aggressor in one of these side lanes because the early Weaver can be quite formidable. Uh, Shukuchi is not bad damage. The swarm, as we talked about earlier, is is rather devastating. You can't address that uh, bug issue. Mm -hmm. Dindran, they know about this one thanks to the Dire Scan. He's going to try and wrap into the Shrine area to catch Miracle here. Now, this it is, so is going to be a little bit of tough, and that's why he needs another TP in. They're going to have the Sun Strike on top of the Battery Assault, and Miracle is down. I'm not sure about that I, big play of aggression from him. That was insane. I I mean, it's, it's space for bottom lane. I guess his team's telling him, like, all right, we're putting pressure bottom. They may respond to this, but... Without the Shadow Demon, I'm pretty sure he dies to that top lane era. Oh, era. He's it. got the wand. He's got the burrow strike. He's got her. Oh, yeah. That is now a the, kill. the escape isn't really there. Cinderin would love this kill to get him towards that level six. Mind control can tuck himself in with the quelling blade. Cinderin ready for it though. Oh no, he doesn't have any mana for battery oh, assault, no. so mind control still yeah, gonna be able to get away. All right, he's home free. What a. I mean, there's some very weird plays and ganks coming out, especially that that miracle play mid lane is. He's not a player you normally think of as like being divey and going like super aggressive for a kill and trading his life for it. Like yeah. that's not a that's not a very miracle esque play. Three, three points of contact. <laughs> he was yeah. dead center, right in the middle, right in the middle of that one. But I, I think you're absolutely right. I think you 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 said the push down at bottom. They probably made the call. Hey, they're they're probably gonna rotate to this. And at the same time, mind control was getting very aggressive at top lane. They figured there's gonna be rotations to one of these side lanes. Yeah. Well, it's, the net result is a small win for Liquid. Like, they they get a tower, they get a kill at top, and they lose SF mid. Like, that's still two out of the, those three things are good for Liquid. And, like, Miracle gets some money from the tower. They're pressuring the enemy carry. So, like, the Ember for the SF trade in itself is, like, a decent trade-off. And then you get a tower. So, I mean, it's not like the, the end result is terrible for Liquid. It just felt like he could have just farmed that wave without diving the tower while those two things happened at top and bottom. Stacking against the Sand King is always a bit of a scary endeavor. Nip are committing their resources to try and clear through this one right now. Mind Control is going to interrupt, and he does have some backup. He's already told the Draw Ranger and Warlock to TP their way on in. There's great opportunities to be had here. The Sun Strike is going to land on Mind Control, bringing him lower, but he is going to receive a heal now. Trixie, low on mana, is going to bring Mind Control a little bit lower, but not low enough to go for the kill. Instead, they're going to pick up GH. Era has managed to lock him down, and they will throw out the Remnant. GH definitely dodges it, but there's only so much you do on that slow support. Kuro banging the drums in the side, itching for a fight still around this hard camp, but uh, it's already been cleared away by Nip, so lost opportunity there for Liquid. Yeah, Kuro wants to use that chaotic offering. He's trying to find an opening for it. Again, I think it's a similar call where it's like Miracle just play aggro at mid, really spam this wave out, start right-clicking that tower so that we can either get a tower top or even a fight up top while you potentially get a T1 mid tower. Like one of these two lanes should end well for Liquid, whether it's a tower or a kill. And right now, Mind Control's in a pretty good position to uh, Quelling Blade his way through, potentially even find Hani here. They turn into an awkward accidental bump. Oh, the Hani actually stops the disruption there. Uh, but the silence was forced on Hani. Instead, they are going to be able to hit the hook shot. Cinderin separates Matu from the rest of his team. They're going to be able to lock him down again with the Sun Strike. They make quick work of whatever heroes inside those cogs. Mind Control is going to be next up. Burrows his way deep into the trees and will manage to get that TP. Nicely played. Curl was the other casualty. Very easily cleaned up by Hani and Trixie. Yeah, great, great disruption from Hani. Using it on the Warlock, not as a setup, not as a save, but just to stop that Chaotic Offering being dropped down to help the Drow Ranger. Without that Chaotic Offering, 
Uh, the drought was dead by the time the disruption ended, and at that point, Kura's like, well, there's no point using it, I'm going to save it for a later fight. Uh, and couldn't tee out in time as well, so really nicely played by Nip. It is still Miracle farming away, he's going to go for that Shadow Blade build again, but that's the kind of trade that they need to be looking for on the, the Nip side. If they can get a couple of kills like that while Liquid's trying to make plays around the rock, that's going to come a long way as far as keeping them close, as far as the, the cores and the, the overall farm goes. You know, it's funny, the, um, I was watching a couple of Liquid games uh, a couple days ago, Prep for the the steep qualifiers, and it's funny. The the one thing I felt Liquid did very well is that they had usually one or uh, they usually had two heroes, two players, and it was different. Uh, I think most of the time it was it was not the same like off lane and support or something like that. It was two different players, two different heroes um, that needed to be very aggressive to buy space for somebody else, and we're seeing that kind of idea behind Liquid here. Um, with Liquid's aggressive play at mid, with uh, the way Mind Control plays very much up in the face of Ninja's Pajamas, it does seem to be one of the uh, the strategies and just general uh, maybe principles of Liquid, how to be able to buy space for each other. Nip, are you going to be able to set up a Sunstrike here on a GH? Quickly right-click him down. Liquid thought they were going to have an opportunity for aggression with that invis, but it prints against them rather starkly. Yeah, that's... Good preparation from Nip to have that sentry there, and well, they find that kill here. Miracle's Shadow Blade itself is going to be scattered out as Trixie swoops into the jungle. Not a whole lot he can really do to Miracle, but bottom lane is what Nip may have their eyes set on with a couple of heroes rotating down here. But just like if they, if it really feels like Nip, if they group up to like push any lane, like let's say bottom lane, they're going to lose like mid tower, potentially top tower as well. Just feels like the the damage output between the Shadow Fiend, the Drow, and Sand King's ability to clear waves is going to punish Nip anytime they make any kind of group up kind of play to to push a lane. Gh left alone in this bottom lane. A little bit of presence, just keeping this push back, and if Nip commits, serious resources killing him. GH, I'm sure, won't be too sad. Actually doesn't manage to get the Shikuchi. I think Trixie planning around that one throws out the swarm. Is uh, one of the plays that Weaver's going to have to do quite a bit here against this Rubik, prevent the steal of Shikuchi. Yeah. Insta swarm out of the Shikuchi and Cinderin even having the hook shot to stun him, so... Nip finding kind of a series of good pickoffs first at top lane, then they get the Rubik at mid, now they find him at bottom lane as well. They're finding the kills and Clockwork having this level 6 and Arcane Boots has this constant sustain and ability to keep going for these kills and... Don't look like they're done, but unfortunately without that hookshot they don't really have the best way to initiate onto Miracle up top. Certainly don't, he takes... Uh, armor. Or Liquid 3 to 9 right now, 14 minutes in. Nip are well ahead in kills, but it's actually Liquid that are slightly up. Uh, about 2,000 net worth right now. And 100 experience. Uh, first, they do have the very clear tower lead. Liquid have managed to keep all of their towers intact. Yeah, most of that, I guess, yeah, coming purely from the Shadow Fiend and his net worth as far as farming the, through the jungle and multiple lanes, getting some towers for his team, but. Quake is doing his best to kind of keep up. He's going to be going into that straight Aghanim's build, but needs to be careful not to get caught out here. Miracle is hunting. Well, it does seem like maybe Nip have made this read nice. They're going to be able to get the disruption, slow him down. The Sunstrike actually misses, but they will still easily kill Miracle with the help of the Soul Catcher. Liquid are trying to put the pressure on mid now, see if they can quickly take this tier one, but maybe... Nip can still make the rotation to stop this. Air is in place, already gets the Veil Discord out. Hookshot misses, though, from Sindarin. Hoping to make the initiation as the rotations came in. Just to Nip. One slight win, or I would actually say that's a pretty moderate win there. In the that's... bottom lane, killing Miracle. Yeah, that's, that, that really hurts Liquid, I feel, this stage of the game. The, the lane ward scouting his TP in, and then the immediate TP to the shrine from Hani was a very heads up play coming from them it does look like they may lose this tower slowly without the hook shot matu can just kind of freely siege it but even so it still feels like a, a decent result there for, for nip killing the shadow fiend yeah they are the team that they're on the opposite side of things right they're the team that is going to be losing their towers and they're going to uh feel the pressure of liquid's push lineup but ultimately they have the better late game and they're just looking to buy each other time for that point 
Pixie running into GH. Up the swarm. GH. Turn around. Just get telekinesis and. Hoping to be able to set up mind control, but uh, the words are already in place early. Yeah, not a whole lot of fun on Trixie at this point, but he was that off lane roll weaver, so you're just going to be going for whatever cost effective IMC can get, starting with a Dragon Lance. It's going to be much more kind of used for perhaps the utility of the swarm and just being a maybe more scouting hero who can be pesky, get on top of the supports like the Warlock. Now, under farm Warlock will still die to a pretty low farm weaver this stage of the game, so he can kind of try and force Kuro to use his spells preemptively and not get off the best Kaelic offering in a fight. Pixie, hook shot, there it is. They're gonna go straight for GH. Mind Control does manage to stop some of that damage. Faked out, Kuro actually holding on to the Chaotic Offering, seeing that GH was definitely dead and is going to wait for a better opportunity. Maybe Trixie here with the Silence up, another stun. Now he's gonna drop the Chaotic Offering. Cinderin comes in, but now the ultimate goes out for Miracle. Era gets bounced back just like that, and Matu actually survives through all of that. Hani is going to be the extra cleanup here. Sunstrike, oh, he tried to have a guess at where Matu was at in Viz, but... Doesn't quite hit him. Koifa not able to get much in return. Nip lose four. And all they got yeah. out of that was that Ruby kill earlier. It's like that one bad fight against the Drow lineup, or nowadays it's more often against like an SD Luna draft. And you lose not just the fight, but you lose a tower and a Roshan potentially as well. Squid will bring buildings down very, very quickly. And after this tier two, if they want, they can fall back to Roshan. Would be a little bit difficult, perhaps, with the TP to the shrine. Uh, we could see Nip still try and contest it, but Liquid's damage output is more than enough to kill it at a decent time. Certainly, if uh, Liquid can't do it now, it's going to have to be something that Nip have in mind for the next 5 to 10 minutes. If lose another team fight like that, it probably means the objective in Roshan, which means... Talked about last game, right? That first Aegis could be used as leverage to take the tier two's bottom lane. They're gonna go for GH. GH gets chained up, unable to steal the remnant. Won't have an escape mechanism there. Yeah, quite a few deaths on GH this game. He's kind of playing that role where it's like, all right, someone go push out this bottom lane. It's a bit of a dangerous place to be. You don't want to send your Shadow Fiend or Drow down there. All right, let's send the Rubik and it's unfortunate that Nip are prioritizing killing him as much as they are, but. It's not the, the biggest loss for Liquid at the same time. Kuro's a little bit bigger of a kill with the Hand of Midas. He's got a, a little bit more net worth to work with, but he can't oh. finish him off. Now the silence on Trixie. Matu turns the whole thing around with the help of Mind Control. They will still get that tier 2 at bottom lane, and that is very much needed. Nip are finally getting some tower gold in their coffers, even if it is at the cost of life. Mm. That's a uh, decent... Bit of control over this bottom side of the, the map, but I think it's something that Nip have already been kind of asserting their dominance over with or without that tower taken. And Hani now in deep as a blink dagger will get found. He picked up here, mind control, hops the sandstorm, stopping any disruption. Turns around, tries to get whatever damage. Oh, he actually has him. Oh, the power of Shadow Dang. Demon, man. Wow. Okay. <laughs> ah, what There's a silly Shadow Demon plus is. Soul Catcher, yeah. Hard five position counters your one position. Doesn't doesn't oh, really man. matter what hero most of the time. How's that? It reminds me of the old. The best was the old uh, the Spectre ones where you find like you can solo kill a Spectre as a Shadow Demon with the Dispersion Soul Catcher illusions. Uh, yeah. But that is yeah Shadow Demon things. Who needs who needs Shadow Poison these days with this four four zero build? Oh, that is uh, that's another big pickup miracle has been picked off uh, a number of times now and the it can be seen in this net worth chart where liquid they're holding on to this constant lead yes but they have the tower advantage they have the this pushing lineup they're supposed to be ahead and i don't think they're getting far enough ahead as they feel like should only 4k gold and about uh, 3000 experience at this point Trixie coming in with a double damage, trying to threaten mind control. Another Sun Strike is going to be off point. Oh, Trixie commits, but can't quite finish him off. Now, Era's going to make some commitment of his own, but he's beaten back by Miracle. Now, stunned up, and he may lose his life. It cost mind control his own, but that's okay. The Ember Spirit was well worth it. Cinderic comes in, hits the hook shot onto the friendly creep, but does manage to close the distance with Miracle, hoping to be able to lock him down with the Meteor. They've got him down. That is big. Nip actually buying back now as Era sees the opportunity, and it's a big one, too. They can get Matu here as well. 
well. The Sunstrike, this time it'll be on point. Koifa picks up the triple kill and a buyback from Era in part help lead to a big win for Ninjas the Pajamas. They get some control, they get some kills, and they might just have a tier two tower as well. Oh, it's such a team fight set up there. Trixie carrying the dust for his team to go on the Sand King at the start, and Quakeville landing all of his spells. The perfect media thanks to Cinderin's hook shot onto the, the SF, hitting the Sun Strikes as well. And that's a tier two tower into Roshan most likely. They group up around the shrine, possibly even want to pop that one before they go for it, and this is very much a much more even if not nit favored state of game now after that fight this is going to be a bit dangerous this roshan can they do it oh i guess they've got yeah they've got weaver but i forgot about that they do it so quick i was like i don't know they've still got this tier one enshrined maybe liquid can get there in time and the most they could do it looks like at this point is get some sort of rebuttal kills to aegis being picked up but not even that's going to happen disruption goes down cindering is still going to be silenced up they're going to try and kill him from a distance but not wanting to fully commit to that kill as the team following would be quite nasty they have to deal with an aegis ember spirit now that is really only second to uh, what probably storm spirit when it comes to feared aegis holders yeah it's definitely up there it's gonna be a big problem for them as far as air goes and with this blink dagger you can start playing hyper aggressive by just blinking in not having to worry too much you can have the fire remnants to escape can use them aggressively when he's got the aegis on the aegis respawn you can often blink out from tough situations so for uh, Nip, they're going to have a very high level Invoker, about to hit level 20. So his spells starting to look very potent. He's got 5.2 gold, so we're going to see a major item pick up soon for Quakeva. And that's going to make this game a whole lot more difficult for Liquid, who, uh, I mean, as much as they don't really want to play that, like, like go for the, the late game, it does feel like they almost need to with the Drow, Shadow Fiend, try and focus on more like the BKB timings of these two heroes. They're both going for that as their next major item, and I think this is them like respecting, they're now at this point in the game where they can't fight the Ember Invoker. The Sunstrike media combo is doing too much damage, the Ember himself just does too much magic damage. Until they get BKBs, they've got to avoid fights. Lincoln's complete for this Invoker. He's going to be harder to bring down. So not only do you have the Aegis on Ember Spirit, you have this nice defensive pickup for Quaifa that can now take initiation of the Sand King. That Burrow Strike does get countered up by the Lincolns. So Nip, they definitely see they're in the advantage. They want to try and force some sort of fight here. Uh, and failing that, they'll just take the mid one tower. It looks like Liquid will be giving it up as you said waiting on those bkbs they all have queued up in their quick buys i mean they've got the rock but i think that necessarily is enough to fight with and speaking of which kuro is found 40 seconds without warlock means this last t2 tower possibly shrines or even a slight high ground attempt could come out of it GH tier wants one. the Courier. Pickoff turns into tier two. He's got it. Moving forward. And he does. Nice pickup. Unfortunately, no items on it. Still. Good enough. Matu trying to get himself that BKB. Has the Mythful Hammer coming up. And Ip are actually forced away from that push. Looks like Mind Control's yeah, presence by himself was enough to keep Nip at, uh, wary of that. Mid. Oh, nice catch up. Disruption right before the TP cancel out. Miracle will be ripped apart by his own illusions. It's very... It feels like Miracle is just kind of not having... I mean, he's just straight up not having his best game. Like, a few misplays from him, missing the kill early on the Invoker where he didn't hit that second raise after the Ghost Walk. I mean, he could have used it earlier. Uh, the Death at mid, plays like that. He's just not really on point. Like, this isn't the Miracle like you expect to see uh, when he's playing for Team Liquid or any team for that matter. And it's right now hurting Liquid a lot. Know you're in trouble when GH is spending his time cliff jungling. Koifa's <laughs> <laughs> gonna come across. He's like, "What the hell? Why is that camp missing, guys?" He just throws out tornadoes yeah. and sun strikes. He's like, "Somebody had to be here," but GH has already made his exit. Yeah, this desperate times. But this is. I, mean, I feel like this is where Nip need to improve on what happened last game. Like they've they've got this edge. They've got the got the Aegis now. 
and they fell short last game because they were just like too passive at a certain stage. Well, not even that they were too passive. It was like Liquid were reading the move around the map, and they weren't able to translate an advantage into objectives into a, a decisively one game. And that's what they need to be doing now. Even though their lamp can scale, they've reached a peak now. They the BKBs aren't up just yet. They've got an Aegis. There's no point giving Liquid the time and space to finish uh, the BKB on Shadowfiend if you can push now. Silence onto Trixie, but they are going to be able to get the Cinder and Hulk in with double inside the Cogs. If Vera can actually get inside there, they can lay out some big time damage. The BKB is activated, and now they have the Epicenter Canner. Cinder tries to make his way back, but it's going to be caught by GH into a Burrow Strike. That'll be a one kill, but Era actually turns back in, tries to go for Miracle, but now he's been silenced up, and he's going to be losing that Aegis unless the disruption save from Hani can buy him some time. Koifa comes in. Nice. Ice while they're holding Miracle in place. Era will finally lose his Aegis, but that's okay. They got one big core out of Liquid. They look to catch more. Mind Control gets away. Matu is going to be just as lucky. The Invis saves his life. Another silence. Turn around play. But it can protect their carry without too many issues here. Shikuchi and Disruption picked up IGH as the spawn ability. And that did not feel too great for, for Nip. They got the Miracle Kill, but they lost the Aegis at the same time. It yeah. feels like a, a small win for them. Didn't it wasn't the cleanest execution. I mean, the, the Drow BKB was the big turnaround point where Liquid could kind of stand their ground and fight. The Warlock not dying in the hookshot meant that he at least got off a, a decent chaotic offering, got the Fatal Bonds off, and uh, allowed the Drow to just kind of sit there doing some decent damage output. But yeah, Nip killing Miracle again. So he's they slowed down his BKB and they can try and take advantage uh, of him falling behind and farm. Invoker is like five... 5.6k net worth ahead of SF to cons to think that like 15 minutes in the game SF was ahead by two or three k net worth things have changed a lot, but uh, this is still going to take a bit more from Nip to secure this game. Like they're going to have Quake for scaling very well into the late game, but uh, Liquid themselves, if they can get SF and Drow a couple more items post BKB, will be able to fight into the Invoker still. What I did like about Nip, because yeah, you're right, the teamfight execution wasn't the cleanest, I, I just think, on both sides. But what I did really like about Nip was the, the way that they were able to make the call, um, whether it was coincidental or, or not, to back away from that epicenter. Felt like the mind control's initiation was really wasted. He kind of jumped in, uh, tried to make his burrow strike play. He maybe caught a little bit of damage on the Era and Syndrome, but it wasn't hugely impactful, like uh, hoping with that team. Yeah. Uh, as a result, Nip come out on top. They're going to have a very farmed Invoker. And this is where, this is the kind of Koipa that we're, we're talking about here. He is a greedier core, but in part, it's because of his uh, late game performance on some of these scaling heroes. That, that's the reason he wants to play that way. It's, it is his, uh, in a way, specialty. And level 22 Invoker rapidly approaching level 25. Nip have to be feeling pretty good about their chances closing out this game two and forcing a game three. Yeah, I mean, late game is where Koikva as a, as a player shines. Like, post 30, 40 minutes is where Koikva is really in his prime when he's got the items to work around, when he feels like he can just do a lot independent of his own team. Uh, not to, like, discredit him or anything, like he's like a, a solo kind of oriented player, but it's more just uh, his style, where he likes to be playing that more farm-oriented role, whereas, whereas Era is going to be the one initiating, playing around the team, creating the space. And for now, Nip, so you get that Octarine core. Uh, yep, they're going to have it now with level level 22, soon to be level 25 talent invoker over maybe like by the 32, 33 minute mark. Uh, they're going to be very, very strong. They don't manage to take any serious damage to the liquid side. I mean, they, they take out one of the two shrines. They've they've managed to get a decent amount done before the SF BKB, but with the SF BKB now complete, Miracle is not going to be that easy free kill in a team fight. Yeah, certainly not. And I think that's where initiation really comes to a point for Nip. If they can Ooh. still get a good initiation and maybe even a disruption on that SF. Come liquid. Ice Trixie popping that smoke. Well played with the Shikuchi. Will get out, no problem. The shrine will be protected, it seems, by liquid. They know how important this shrine is above all else to be able to control that Roshan pit. Can't afford to give up another Aegis. Trixie, it looks like he got caught, though. Mind Control and Matu. Maybe it was with the gem of Mind Controls managed to uh, spot him out, get a big kill, and he just happened to force staff himself straight into a ward as well. So, uh, well, a little pickups there by Liquid, setting themselves up for a good Roshan fight in the uh, the coming minutes. And it's just like a, a good location to fight because you know NIP are there, grouped up as five, and you feel like you can get a jump on them, uh, which is 
something that Liquid haven't been able to do too much this game and perhaps catch them by surprise. BKB of the Shadow Fiend. Trying to double damage right now, ideally looking to, to bottle this one. Not sure if they've... They, yeah, they don't actually have any bottles left, so... Just gonna pick it up and, and probably take this tier 2 tower mid. Can't take any shrines still, there's still a tower at bottom lane, so they are a bit more limited in their options as far as Liquid go. Miracle starts coming forward. They do have the remnant. They are hoping to be able to jump something, but it's an illusion. They jump instead. Now Cinderin managed to get the hook and a four staff away. Still eliminated, though, by Miracle's physical damage. Miracle has to make his way out of this one, though. He's going to pop the ultimate towards the end of his BKB, but on the left-hand side, Mind Control has been caught by Eren Koifa. Now Matu, slowed down by the Purge of Trixie, is going to force into a BKB of his own. Very rapidly, the defensive power of Liquid is dwindling. Matu, he actually managed to get the TP out, but Miracle won't be as lucky. He gets a disruption out from Hani, and the team is just going to and blast him with all that damage they're going to be able to pull him down to his death and gh very likely to follow him to the grave as well as hani and era manage to snatch him out near the ancients three down all in exchange for just little old cinderin who made that nice initiation what what illusion was that was that a disruption bait uh you mean at the start i did yeah. i didn't see what that was no I think it was a i think yeah, it was an so? invoker uh, illusion in which case it had to have been disruption bait gotcha yeah, because I mean, SF popping his BKB just for that clockwork kill means he's suddenly behind the tower in a really deep position, and he's committed his BKB. At that point, he felt like, oh, I'm, well, I've got my BKB. I feel obliged to just throw a Requiem because he doesn't he probably figures he's not going to get one off later when the BKB wears off. But he got probably very minimal damage out of that Requiem based on Nip just splitting up and dispersing. They were off chasing the Sand King, so not really the ideal teamfight execution from Liquid and. As you mentioned, that illusion, the illusion bait from the disruption, really just setting Nip up for a great fight. I think Nip have a pretty good read of what Liquid's feeling right now. I think it's Liquid are pretty desperate to make things work. You know, they just got that BKB, they picked up the double damage. You know, there's all these sort of things. It's like, guys, we gotta win a fight right now because ultimately we're a draw ranger lineup that isn't pushing towers and an SF lineup that isn't actually farming. The, this game is very rapidly going down the drain for us and. Nip are just getting stronger and stronger, as can be seen. Trixie, who picked up a Diffuse Blade not so long ago, now has a fresh BKB coming into the Koifa. Click on him is now level 23 with that Octarine Core and another 2,800 gold to back it up. Yeah, that 25 is coming very, very soon, and he's going to be a big, big problem. These BKBs are getting shorter and shorter. As the time goes on, Matu's down to 8 seconds. Miracle's only used his once, but it feels like if the next fight or two don't go like convincingly well for Liquid, it does feel like their lineup is going to kind of just be past its its final peak, and then it's going to be all nip in the late game. All right, man, smoke up. They almost run into Koifa. They actually burst strike forward. I think his smoke popped, so he wanted to move forward, but now Nip see everything, and Mind Control's the one in trouble. Four staffs away, but a nice hook shot. Cinderin catches two, but can't get the, the cogs off and just gets eliminated. GH manages to get the quick burrow strike. Mind Control leading Arrow on a merry chase here with his four staff will finally be brought down. Crow tried to come in and give him a heal, but now he's in the wrong position against Koifa and Trixie. He will be duoed up. They actually have the vision of Miracle. He's going to be forced to pop his VK be trying TP out. He is good. Is Matu going to be able to get away as well? BKB TP out. No disables. Just physical damage, which was still almost enough. GH, he's also going to make an escape with the stolen hook shot they got from Sindra. That's such a bad spot for your smoke to be popped. Like, you're low ground, the invoker's on the high ground, and he's invis, and you've just lost your gem. Like, Sand King no longer had the gem. He lost that in the last fight, so vision right now is a big problem for, for Liquid, and I think they needed to just... To, I guess ideally want to approach that smoke differently so that they're not going low ground to high ground, but at the same time, they know nip that top side of the map. They just didn't know that invoker was kind of straggling behind and was going to actually be in the perfect position to catch them out. In that low ground position and give his team all the info they needed to turn that fight around. It really was the perfect time, right? Two seconds earlier, they probably run into Koifa um, before he's past that, that high ground area and is running to the left side, and they actually get a quick pick, and two seconds later, yeah. Koifa isn't actually popping that smoke. Yeah, either either of those two, and I think it could have been a very different scenario for Liquid. Like, the killing the Invoker scenario is absolutely fantastic for them, and even if you manage to just get onto that high ground uh, without the smoke popping and then able to take a fight to the left where the rest of the Nip side was, it could have been a very different uh, uh, fight all in all with, like, getting Mind Control with a Burrow Strike initiation followed up with a Requiem burst down a target to start things off, but... 
as it stands, Nip now get themselves another Aegis and uh, looking very good to start thinking about closing out this game. They haven't got the best pushing lineup, like the Invoker uh, with the Alacrity on either himself or put it on a Weaver is at least decent push, but uh, the Liquid teamfight high ground defense is something they will still likely respect. They're going to have to take it nice and slow. It's where <laughs> Alacrity on a Seed Scrape comes in. Horde Spirits also doing their pushing power. They're going to have Trixie on the front lines. It seems with his BKB and, uh, and his time lapse, he should be a uh, decent hero to chip away that tower. Liquid probably shouldn't be able to uh, get a quick kill on him and rebuff this push. Yeah, Aero's got a BKB, so even if he dies once the Aegis, he can pop that on the respawn and it does feel like Nip has mentioned just slow sieging things here. Another forward spirit coming in, couple right clicks with an alacrity, resummon them and just rinse repeat. Slow and steady. Power goes down. Two man smoke on the side is gonna wear out. Mind They're control spotted did now. not see his opportunity for an initiation, and now they may actually get caught. That Observer Ward placed out by Nip. They knew how important it was to be able to, uh, to see the rotations across when they go for this bottom lane push. So that ward counter ward combination is a nice setup. Miracle takes a bit of damage here for the Colt Snap. They're going to pop their first shrine now of the defense of Liquid against Nip. It's a question of how patient will Nip be. At some point, will they try and force a fight? Will they stick? The hero actually onto the racks, but right now it seems like they're happy just to slowly chip at the range racks. DH throws out that stolen hook shot. It's like it Very was uh, about to fade anyway. And Nip are actually going to back away for a second here, and Aerith's going to deal with that top lane push. Yeah. Very hard to uh, initiate onto the Nip side. They've got that Shadow Demon who's just always sitting behind, has that extra cast range from his level. 15 talent can just put someone down in disruption. And GH at this point just kind of showing off as he's a bit bored. It does lose the hook shot now. All right, Nip's got that uh, top lane pushing out again. Era will rejoin his team. There are five man efforts into. I'll take that. I mean, if they can just keep on stalling this out to the A's, I mean, they've still got another minute and a half, but at this rate, they, they won't even take a melee rax in that minute and a half. Nip need to make a more concerted, aggressive attempt. Not even onto the buildings necessarily, even just starting and forcing a fight with a, a hook shot. Maybe something they just have to do at some point. For now, they're just trying to slow seed using disruption illusions. Bixie gets a little bit more aggressive with the alacrity, will finish off that range rax, but it is just a range rax. Liquid won't be too scared of that. It's the melee rax. That is the price then. Aging bit by bit is not good enough against that regen. So we'll see if they make another concerted effort here as the push comes forward, the disruption. Even backdoor protection still up. Matsu will take a decent amount of damage down to half health now as Trixie comes forward, pops his BKB, threatening Matsu's life, but he does get a four step back. Now with Matsu healing, Nip can get some more damage onto that melee racks, but the rest of Liquid start coming forward, chasing Nip back. And they're struggling to get this rack. I mean, they're, they're still in a fine position, don't get me wrong, but could have making them work for it, showing some world-class high ground defense with the SF illusions. Oh, that's definitely the, a big uh, one. Uh, like, not putting onto the racks, they will get taken out. Just zoning the SF out, knowing that this will free up the space. Oh, there it is, the up initiation. Epi onto Koifa, but the Lincolns managed to protect him for the Burrow Strike, so there wasn't any real good hold. They finally get a Yule Scepter onto Koifa, but he managed to get down to away with a Ghost Walk. Oh, Cinderin, he was halfway through the hook shot uh, the uh, animation to be able to get away from this one. Mind Control has been stunned up, does get out another stun, but Koifa blocks it again with the Lincolns, and now they've got a disruption onto a Draw Ranger with Miracle slowed down on the side. This is Rapidly turning disastrous for Liquid as they come out and immediately get rebuffed. They just get taken out like that with a meteor combination. They lose Matu. They get a drop GH as well. Miracle's left alone now to defend against Nip unless they want to buy back on Matu. Uro still having their chaotic offering, but it seems like they'll give up the melee racks and try and keep these buybacks intact or at least waiting for a better opportunity when Mind Control and GH are back up at all. During that 30 seconds, Nip can take a lot. Even with the buyback, they still want to take this Rax in mid lane. They've taken at least the tower with the Alacrity Invoker. They can take more. 
Miracle comes forward. Now the Chaotic Offering. They look to blow up Koi, but they've got him dead. 90 seconds down. But Nip have bought everything they needed with that Aegis push. They forced a buyback. They got a lane of Rax. They really don't need more. So a full retreat out from them. Make sure Liquid don't catch anything else but the Koi for death. Uh, Liquid are now going to be scrambling in turn to try and take objectives during this downtime for the Invoker. Yeah, I mean, there's a tier 2 tower at bottom, but perhaps the bigger objective is forcing that Invoker buyback. You think, how do we win this game, considering how rough things have been looking for the last 15-20 minutes? And I think it comes from forcing that Invoker buyback and finding a pickoff on him at a later time. You may even pay for that Invoker buyback with, like, a, a death here if Syndrome catches someone with a hook shot. As Invoker buys back, that could be a really tough one. Potentially, you can even hold this without the buyback. That's really the ideal scenario for them. They just want to keep putting that Cogs on the high ground. Eric can try and keep spamming it out. It's very difficult to force high ground, even with Invoker dead. Physical damage is still pretty formidable for Liquid. It's going to be the Tier 3 is beginning to drop. 30 seconds left for Koifa's Invoker. Nip. Are they going to give in to this pressure? Now Hani, gonna be caught, they're gonna be able to get the Burrow Strike onto him, Shrine activated, but it's not enough to save him, but Cinderin managed to get the hook shot onto two, locking them in, but they both get a four staff outside of the Cogs. BKB activated, but Miracle can't make his way out like Matu can, he's too low HP, so he turns around, tries to go for the ultimate, Tornado, oh, it was just a sliver away from catching Kuro as well. The buyback was forced though, and you said, gods, that gives Liquid a glimmer of hope, even if it costs them a death and maybe a buyback of their own, at at least they have a chance at an end game scenario was before yeah. we didn't see that same kind of light yeah it, it creates a win condition for them which is what was just completely it seems lacking for the last 20 minutes it feels like they've just been unable to really do lock quicks has been quietly farming his way to level 25 six solid invoker but now we're looking at potential sf buyback they're going to be on the ropes themselves with an sf buyback but at least a kill on quick that could set them up for success for staff over the cogs and a push back. Now, Era actually commits here forward with the BKB. Double Ren that used Kuro. He's going to be caught inside the shrine. He's taken apart. Cinderin, similar story here. He has a Ghost Scepter to fall back on. A disruption. Hook, but Eox into his own illusions. Won't be able to make it out. Mind Control gets taken out, though. Trixie's up next with a silence. Not able to do enough, though. Matu can't output the damage. They're trying to hold on to this buyback of miracles and use Mind Controls instead. Missing out on the stun on Trixie. Now, Matu in serious trouble. Gets silence up. Push back the combination is there but a disruption save from GH is not going to be enough a tornado catches Matu on the way out Trixie will help clean it up now they're left with no buyback on the draw ranger for 90 seconds and it seems like that win condition that small little opportunity liquid have now closed they're going to come back yeah. in the SF but they will still have to fight this one at bare minimum four versus four jump in epicenter combination it pulls out Trixie they do manage to hold at least one telekinesis forward they go for invoker he gets a Yule Scepter, managed to get away with a Ghost Swak, it looks like. Nip are still going to pursue, but it seems like he is too oh. far away. Yeah, missing out on the Burrow Strike. Turn around, Scythe and a Torpedo Strike. No, my control's not out, though. Yeah, he had the Lincoln's here anyways for the, the bar. It was close, but then I'm like, all right, uh, Dexy, that wouldn't have mattered too much. But this is... Well... I mean, there's there's still some small hope for Liquid. You've got an Invoker without buy. I think if you give Nip the space to get those buybacks back up and another Roshan, then that hope disappears. But this, like, one-minute window where there's, they're going to have Drow back alive before Rosh respawns. Luckily for them, it's a very slow Rosh respawn. Invoker would love to get the Aegis to make up for not having buyback for four minutes, but with a, a five men alive, there's an ever-so-slight hope for this Liquid side. They picked up a Vlad's on Kuro. They're going for whatever cheap, cost-effective items they can. And they really just have like this, it's not even like they've got one fight left, it just feels like they've got this very short three, four minute period of time where they've got to make something happen. Miracle felt like he had to scout out Roshan, but now he's low with the BKB, pops the BKB, lets it out, does force Cinder in away, but that's now a big team fight ultimate yeah. that's on cooldown. Miracle still is yet to make a full escape if he's not careful. It may be able to take advantage of this one. Roshan is still not up. Liquid very rightly feared that it was already up and Nip were doing it. But unfortunately for Nip, they're going to have to wait for a full five on five to be able to take that Aegis. Well, luckily, SF even gets a chance to heal up a bit more. Or uh, this potential Rosh fight goes down. A Ranger though, still trapped at this bottom lane, which is a bit of an issue for Liquid. 
tries to push the lane out as much as he can before this fight is gonna occur. Bit of a dancing game there between Mind Control and Era. Era, who does not have a Lincoln's a little bit more susceptible to that initiation. Combo stuns yeah. from All Liquid this. Nip. I like this play a lot. They're going to take the yeah. high ground where the former Dire Shrine was, and it's Liquid who are going to now take the low ground with their smoke out. They run into Hani. They manage to get the initiation there, but it's just a support. They can bring him down. Almost. No one gets a force after the high ground. Sindarin pops the Ghost Scepter, and their initiation from Liquid doesn't actually catch anything. Now Mind Control stuck about in the high ground. He's done for. Era comes in big. Gets a lot of damage on Matu. Tries to go for a desperate TP out, but doesn't actually make it. With this high ground advantage, Liquid can't output any damage. Kuro, he gets a force after the high ground. Quickly followed up by Trixie, takes him down, triple kill for the Trickster. And now it's going to be Nip, all five man up, three down on Liquid. None of them have buybacks. This should be Megas. Yeah, they're going straight for the racks. They'll even fight their way through backdoor protection if they have to. And, well, it's not even activated as, I'm not sure what creeps from the base, but hey. <laughs> At this point, I don't think it really matters as Nip will, uh, in theory, secure themselves this Game 2 victory. It's not quite over just yet. Liquid will make them play it out as they do threaten to go for some split push in mid lane, but Throne play is going to be the end of Liquid if they don't come back to defend. The uh, stolen disruption from GH will give a lot more credibility to this push as backdoor protection is down from a single range creep and siege creep, but Tier 4 is already dead and these heroes are being threatened now by Hani alone. Throws out the ultimate miracle. He knows. The end game is nigh. And Throne is going to fall. That's it. GG is called. Liquid lose game number two. Ninja's pajamas tie the series up and we're going to go to our first game three in the DAC European qualifiers. Yeah, that was a very solid game two showing.